Welcome to the Episcopal Church of Our Savior of Madison County on this glorious September day. Whether you are joining us in the peace and beauty of our sanctuary or following us on YouTube and Facebook, we are all united together in the community of Christ's love completely and eternally. Everybody is invited to join us for our fellowship after our service. I also want to mention that um, for the second year, we had a booth at the Richmond Pow Wow. Um, I want to thank everybody that was involved in helping us with that. I want to thank Janet Quigg and the people that in our Native American community that have worked hard um, for many, many years to host the powwow. And I wanna thank uh, Laura and Alan and Phoebe, Matt, Louise, Stephen, Shirley, Mary and um, Alexi, who were all there and, and helped us staff our booth and share with folks in the community what our parish is all about and how we want to reach out in partnership with the Native American community in um, Madison County.
and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. <coughs> A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said, said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whenever they will follow my instructions or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, in the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaint against the Lord. For what we are, that you complain against us. And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites, Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, 
and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a la layer of dew around the camp. <coughs> when the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness there was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites they saw this, they said to one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <coughs> the appointed psalm today is Psalm 105, verses 1 through 6 and 37 through 45, beginning on page 738. We will say this together. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory is his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Serve to the Lord in his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen, he has led out his people with silver and gold, and all their tribes, for there was not one of his son. Egypt was glad of their going, because they were afraid of him. He spread out a cloud for a covering, and a and fire for his light in the mighty season. They asked, and quails appeared, and he satisfied them with the bread of his plan. He opened the rock, and water flowed, so the river ran in the dry places. For God remembered his holy word, and Abraham his servant. So he led forth his people with gladness. His chosen with shouts of joy. He gave his people the lands of the nations, and they took the fruit from others of his joy. That they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The appointed epistle for today is a re reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. To me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to, to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better but to remain in the flesh is more than necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy and faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only, live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted, granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well. Since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have, hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks. Thanks be to God. God.
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like a landlord who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went again out at noon and about three o'clock and did the same. About five o'clock he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have been born the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to the last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. One of the most meaningful books I have read is by the Franciscan monk and priest Richard Rohr. In his book, Falling Upward, he suggests that our lives can be considered to have two parts. In the first half of our lives, we build a career, a home, raise a family. Many of us focus on priorities that are promoted in our secular culture, such as being independent, self-sufficient, making a lot of money, seeking power, influence, and status. However, with this comes a lot of life experience. And eventually, we begin to realize that life is not always fair. Perhaps you've worked hard all day, you've arrived on time, you remain focused in your work, and you don't leave early. And someone else there arrives late, takes long coffee and lunch breaks and leaves work early, and yet he or she makes more money than you do. Or perhaps your hardworking, honest person, toiling to make ends meet, doing the right thing, and yet you never seem to get ahead or rewarded for your hard work and honest efforts. When these things happen, it can be awfully frustrating. If you're a dedicated parent working at home, perhaps you feel that your work is undervalued by society, even though you are doing some of the most important work in raising a family. If you're a parent, you probably heard more than once one of your children say, it's not fair that Johnny gets more allowance than I do. Or it's not fair that I'm the one that always has to do the dishes. All of us at one time or another experience 
things that seem not fair. And I imagine that the disciples were also feeling that things were not fair. Maybe the disciples were beginning to question what they were doing. They were asking Jesus questions about who is the greatest in heaven, about forgiveness, about how to inherit eternal life. They had heard Jesus tell a rich young man that he must sell all his possessions and give his money to the poor and then follow him. That young rich man refused to do this. So maybe the disciples were beginning to question what they had given up, the sacrifices that they had made to follow Jesus. After all, they had left their occupations, their homes, their families, the villages that they grew up in. They left behind everything to follow Jesus. So they may well have been asking themselves, what will we get in return? So in response, Jesus tells them this parable of the laborers in the vineyard. Now, the lesson in this parable at first glance may seem to be a really tough pill to swallow if we read it literally rather than as a metaphor. All the laborers get paid the same amount of money at the end of the day regardless of whether they had worked one hour or they had worked hard all day long. So you can imagine that there was some resentment and frustration that those that had worked all day long in that hot, scorching sun to realize that others that had worked much fewer hours were getting the same wage. So I imagine the disciples were saying, well, What's fair about that? So, in characteristic fashion, Jesus' response was not what the disciples expected, or even what we expect. Jesus always turned things upside down and reversed expectations. And he said, the last will be first, and the first will be last. Well, I imagine that that was cold comfort for the disciples. It may not be particularly reassuring to us either. However, that's only true if we're evaluating things in terms of the material standards of the marketplace, the standards of the secular world. The problem with the laborers who complained about their wages is they thought that the vineyard owner owned them something. They thought that the wage of each labor should correspond with the amount of work they performed. In other words, the laborers were working only to get a reward for themselves. They wanted a big reward. What Jesus was trying to help them understand is that in the kingdom of heaven, those that only work for their own reward will be last. And that those that are working for other reasons, like following Jesus, doing the right thing, acting with a generous heart, that they will be first. Now, if we're being taken advantage by others, that can be a very legitimate reason to voice our concerns because no one should be taken advantage of. And when we feel we're being treated unfairly or taken advantage, it's easy for us to feel resentment. And the hard part is if we compare ourselves to others in terms of what we give and what we get in return, we're likely going to be dissatisfied. We might never be happy. Now I must confess that in my own experience, it's taken me a long time to understand this. There are times when I still struggle with this. But there's nothing in Holy Scripture that assures us that life will always be fair. 
There's nothing that assures us that the rewards that we receive will be directly proportional to our effort. Sometimes in life when things happen that just seem to be so unfair, if we just wait, we may find that God has something in store for us that is even better than we can ask or imagine. And it reminds me of a Chinese proverb. It's about a farmer and his son. They had a beloved stallion who helped the family earn a living. And one day that horse ran away and their neighbors exclaimed, your horse ran away. What terrible luck, the farmer replied. Maybe so, maybe not, we'll see. A few days later, the horse returned home, leading a few wild mares back to the farm as well. And so the neighbors shouted, your horse has returned and brought back several horses home with him. What great luck. And the farmer replied, maybe so, maybe not. We'll see. Later that week, the farmer's son was trying to break one of those wild mares and she threw him to the ground, breaking his leg. The villagers cried, your son broke his leg. What terrible luck. The farmer replied, maybe so, maybe not. We'll see. A few weeks later, soldiers came from the National Army and marched through town, recruiting all the able-bodied boys in for the army. But they didn't take the farmer's son. He was still recovering from his injury. So the friend shouted, your boy is spared. What a tremendous luck. To which the farmer replied, maybe so, maybe not, we'll see. God always works in mysterious ways that we cannot foresee, but we can always trust God. And Jesus was trying to help the disciples understand something that's crucial about the character of God. God is lavishly generous. God's way is always one of generous grace, not merit-based reward. God operates on the basis of granting undeserved generosity rather than the business principles of pay for services rendered or equal pay for work of equal value. God's love for us is also lavishly generous. So Jesus is challenging the disciples and us to see through the eyes of God. We are people created in God's image. And the gift that we receive is life created by God and an invitation to be in relationship with God. And perhaps the most remarkable thing is that that gift is free. It's given freely to us. We're invited to be co-creators with God in the world by loving others as God loves us. We are called to bring goodness, kindness, compassion into the world through all that we do. We're called to be lavish as God in extending our love, generosity, and grace to others. And I think the Episcopal Bishop and Choctaw Elder Stephen Charleston understands this gift of life and love that is freely given to us and that free invitation that we receive to be in relationship with God. He said, we are mystics in the everyday miracle, people showing up not because they have to, but because they can. The miracle of community, the vision of reconciliation, the mystical experience of love freely given and freely received. So this is also where the wisdom of Richard Rohr in his book, Following, Falling Upward, is so relevant. He explains that in the middle of our lives, once we have some of that real life experience, we realize that life is not always fair. 
we learn that our hard work will not necessarily result in the material, financial, or other rewards that we may have expected when we were younger. And we understand that things in the secular world set as priorities are misguided. We realize that ultimately it's our relationship with God and other people that matters. Sir Richard Rohr suggests that in the second half of our life, we should be falling upward. In other words, we should focus our time and our attention on God, nurturing our relationship with God and others and following the teaching of Jesus. So how do we nurture our relationship with God? There's so many ways we can do this. We can set aside time each day for prayer. We can use the daily offices in the Book of Common Prayer. We can join the Wednesday evening centering prayer group and attend the Wednesday evening services. We can attend the Sunday morning Bible discussion. Women are welcome to learn about and join the Daughters of the King. Even just doing one of these things can make a huge difference in the quality of our lives and relationship with God and others. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able as we say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal God to the Father. God for God, light for light, true God for true God, to be God not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He descended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge our baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are Form 3, found on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we may all be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for healing for presiding Bishop Michael Curry. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. And an end to the violence and wars in Ukraine, Syria, Sudan, and Niger. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our Lord may find favor in your sight. 
Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let thy rest shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. In our parish, we pray for Bob and Lisa Kilborn, Marilyn, Trish, Scott, Ryan, Miranda, Glenn, Karen, Eva, Don, Mary Alice, Catherine, Helen, Hayden, and Hannah, Linda Marshall, Tracy, Brian, Kathy, Arlene, Mac, Bob, Beth, Richard, Jennifer, Kathy, David, Charlie, Mark and Andrea, Rick, Sarah, John, Leslie and Jim, Robert and Mary, Sally, Dan, and Lisa. We give thanks for the diocesan grant received for our memorial garden. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of Ireland. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Raphael's Church, Reverend Canon Dr. Helen Van Coovering, Rector. And we pray for all churches in Madison County, for their clergy and members. confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Days or anniversaries to celebrate today? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
gracious and loving God, I ask that you bless these gifts that have been offered in love and sacrifice and support of the mission of your church and the ministry of our parish. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. <laughs>
you Christ. Get ready.
pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in this world. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Thanks be to